My name is Danny, and except for a few people in my family, I've never talked about this with anyone. I purchased a fixer-upper cabin in the woods. It really needed a lot of work, but I thought it would make a great hunting cabin, or just a place for short getaways. It was built really far into the woods, and it looked like it hadn't been used in a really long time. Even the narrow road leading up to the cabin would need to be fixed up some. There were bushes sticking out into the road, and many potholes needed filling. Well, I started fixing it up on the weekends, and then I decided to take time away from working for a while and just go live in the cabin while I worked on it. I was prepared. I had done a lot of research on wild plants. I also had a whole library of reference books on plants. So between the wild plants, a little planning of my own, and hunting, well, that was going to save me a ton of money on groceries. I made sure that I wouldn't have to go into town very often for supplies, and I was going to live off the land as much as I could. Where the cabin was built, it's a good 60 miles in, which is already a long way in. But add to that the fact that the road is treacherous even on a good day, so you have to drive really slow. So it's roughly a five hour drive to town. Whether going or coming back, I can drive about four and a half hours, but that last 30 minutes, which is just a little over a mile, I have to walk the rest of the way or get my ATV and use it to pull a small trailer back to the cabin. Whenever I do make a trip to town, because it takes so long, I get everything I need and enough supplies to last me for a while. There's a whole room inside the cabin just for holding supplies. So I'd been living in the cabin for several months, when a few days before Christmas, I thought I heard what sounded like a puppy crying. I looked out and this little puppy came walking out of the woods and came right up to me. Well, I was surprised to see him way out where I was. I even said out loud, well, hello there. Where'd you come from? Where's your owner or your mama? The puppy was so cute. It was solid black, but its paws were awfully big for such a little guy. And I knew what that meant. I knew it meant he was going to have to grow in to those big paws, and he'd probably be a pretty big dog. His paws also looked a little misshapen. I figured maybe he had some kind of birth defect, something genetic going on. At least it didn't seem to affect his ability to walk. I was getting some hamburger patties ready to cook at that time, and that puppy must have smelled the hamburger because he began to whine. The pup surprised me by eating two good-sized burgers and he was staring at me like he wanted more, but I didn't want to overfeed him. I opened up the door, thinking he probably had to go out and pee, and I didn't want him making a mess in the cabin. Well, as soon as I opened up the door, he took off running into the woods. I ran out, looking around for him, but he was gone. I sure hoped the little guy would be okay. The next time that I saw the little pup, it was Christmas Day. Just as soon as it got dark out, I heard the puppy crying outside. Well, I got up and I went to the door, but the puppy wouldn't come inside that time. It was just sitting there and whining, and then walking towards the trees. Then it would stop and sit and look at me. I tried calling the puppy towards me, but it just sat there. I didn't understand what it wanted. It would take several steps towards me, and then it whined and walked back to the trees and sat again. Thinking that maybe it wanted me to follow it, I grabbed my shotgun and flashlight, and I went to see if that's what it wanted. Well, it walked ahead of me and sometimes looked back at me, almost as if it was making sure that I was actually coming. The puppy just kept walking, and I was beginning to wonder if this little game was ever going to end. The puppy finally stopped, so I aimed the flashlight to where it was sitting and whining, and that's when I saw there was another black dog. Its leg was caught in a bear trap. Ooh, I was pissed. I wanted to know who would dare put a bear trap on my property. It must have been put there very recently because I'd been up in that part of the woods many times and I never saw a trap. Not there or anywhere else on my land. I was fuming inside over someone doing this. I decided that I needed to try to free what was obviously the mother dog. She looked to be in pretty bad shape. I didn't know how long she'd been trapped like that, but I had to try to get her free quickly or she wasn't going to have a chance. 
I propped my flashlight up with a rock and a stick, and then I worked at the trap. I was concerned that she might try to bite me out of fear or pain, but she stayed calm. It was hard to see what I was doing with just the light from my flashlight, and I wasn't sure if I'd get it open, but after a couple of tries, I did get it, and I got her leg out. At first, I thought she might be too weak to stand or walk. And let me say this before I go further. This was a big dog, but it was a completely normal dog. Big, but normal, within a normal size range. Now, it was bigger than most labs I'd ever seen, but smaller than a Great Dane. Well, she finally stood up. But then she started to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then she rose up. And before I knew it, this dog was towering over me. She showed her teeth, and I damn near pissed my pants. Even though I just freed her, I thought for sure that I was a goner in that moment. Then she just dropped to all fours and took off, and the pup was trailing behind her. A minute later, I heard this really, really loud, strange howl. Now, I'd been living there for months, but I never heard anything like that before. And then it sounded like the puppy was trying to howl. I'm assuming it was the puppy. It was like this little baby howl. And you might think I'm crazy. But after a few minutes and my heart was beating more slowly, I actually felt good about what I did. I felt good about saving the mama dog. It made me feel good to help the puppy by helping its mama. But I did have a lot of questions. What kind of dogs were they? There was something weird about them the size of that mother dog, and I wondered why there were dogs that far up into the mountain. I've never seen a dog in all those months, not even on the road that I traveled down occasionally. The day after Christmas, I was gathering some wood to bring inside, and I saw the mother dog and the puppy. Both of them were walking upright on their hind legs. Now, I'd seen dogs do that before, but not the way these dogs were doing it. Any time I'd ever seen a dog walking on their hind legs, it looked like they were doing a trick, and it didn't look very comfortable. With Mama Dog and the puppy, it looked very comfortable and very natural for them, and that seemed really strange to me. Mom was doing okay, but was walking with a slight limp. That in itself was pretty shocking. A bear trap could easily snap the bone of a dog, even sever its leg. I don't think that most dogs would be walking almost like nothing ever happened, just hours after being set free. The dogs looked at me, but they kept going. About 30 minutes later, there was what sounded like a knock at my door. Being so far up the mountain, I don't get knocks at my door. It's extremely rare. So I got my shotgun, then I opened the door, and I saw the puppy. He walked in and stared at me, then walked to the fridge. I was going to throw it a piece of the turkey that I cooked for my Christmas dinner. Then I thought about the mom. I got the turkey out and I cut some of the breast off for myself. Then I took the rest of the bird and set the whole thing outside on the steps. You would think that the story ends here, but it doesn't. This is just how it all started. I wouldn't see the mom dog and her pup every day, but occasionally I would see them pass by my cabin. I'm sure that I didn't see them every time that they were around. My guess is that I only spotted them a fraction of the time. As time passed, I would see them much more often. Then it became almost daily. I had a hunch that the mama felt comfortable in the area of my cabin. I could be wrong, but it made sense to me because I freed the mama from the bear trap. I think she saw me as useful. So one day when I saw the mama and her pup, I noticed there was a lump on mom's left leg. I would put food out for them whenever I saw them lingering around the yard. I didn't know for sure, but I thought that if they were staying close by, it could mean that they were hungry. I didn't bother with water because there were many streams on my land. They always did eat the food I put out, and I watched them eat numerous times. I noticed how the mama always let her pup eat a good amount first before she would even touch the food. I couldn't remember if that was something all mother dogs did or if this was unusual. I'd see them all through the winter, but when April came, I stopped seeing them. I wondered if they were all right. Months went by and I thought that they were gone for good. But then when November of the following year came, mama was back and the puppy had grown, quite a bit in fact. It wasn't just the two of them now, though. 
There were two more black dogs, and they were huge. When the group of them passed through, one of the new huge dogs growled at me. To my surprise, the mama turned quickly, and she growled even louder and more ferociously than the one that growled at me, as if she was standing her ground or putting him in his place. That's what it looked like to me. Well, he backed up, but she wasn't done with him yet. She walked towards him and stood in front of him, and the pup that was now much bigger also growled very fiercely at the two new dogs. I wondered if things would be different if I hadn't saved the mama from the trap that time. If we didn't have that trust because of that, would I need to fear her? I knew it was the mama dog. Although she was walking fine now, that lump on her leg never went completely away. The pup was a lot bigger, but not nearly as large as the others, at least not yet. And the way that the mama and pup looked at me, I could see that they hadn't forgotten me. It felt good that they acted protectively towards me. It made me feel glad to see them. I yelled out to them. I said, Mama, you hungry? And she walked towards me with the pup. I was surprised that she stood so close to me. She was only about 10 or 12 feet from me. She had never gotten that close before. The pup had, but not her. Not until that day. I brought out a plate of hot dogs. I opened up three packs. Mama ate with the pup. And then she looked at the other two, as if to tell them it was their turn to eat. I began to wonder if their pack was a matriarchy. Then, after all the dogs had eaten, I watched the whole group walk off into the woods. Two days later, I heard this growling, howling, and this kind of aggressive-sounding half-bark, half-loud snapping sound. That aggressive sound is kind of hard to describe. I went to look outside, and there was a bear and the mama dog. I was surprised to see a bear. I only saw one ever come this close to the cabin once before, and that was in the first few months I was there. The bear stood up, and I knew there was going to be a fight. I was very concerned. I felt like Mama Dog was definitely at a disadvantage. Mama Dog walked closer to the bear, and then it all happened so fast. I didn't see it coming, and it was shocking to see. The two new male dogs came from behind trees and attacked the bear so fast. That bear went down so quickly. Mama and the pups stood back while the two male dogs tore that bear to pieces. The group of four dogs dragged away the bear, and I guess they ate it. Right after the bear was killed, I heard my name being called. It was my dad and my brother Ben. They told me they'd witness what just happened, and of course they were shocked. My dad told me that they were bringing me my new glasses. I broke my old pair months before and had to order new glasses. My vision isn't very good at all without them. My dad said, Danny, I want you to come back with us. I told my dad no, that I was good there and I didn't want to leave. My dad accepted my answer. I guess he could tell that I wasn't going to budge. And he said, well, I have something for you then. Ben then handed me the shotgun he had with him and two big backpacks filled with ammo. I was pretty excited to get a new shotgun, but I also told them that I really didn't need it. I already had one, and I mostly used my crossbow for hunting. My dad and my brother stayed for three days, then they headed back home on the fourth day. They said they'd come back and check on me in the spring. I thanked them for making the trip and told them I was happy to have my new glasses. After they left, I went hunting, and within two hours, I got a nice buck. I had to use my ATV to get it back to the cabin. I worked at butchering that buck the rest of the day, filling a big bucket with any spare parts I didn't want, and then I left it by a tree, knowing that the dogs would find it. Christmas was coming in a few days, and I figured I'd be eating venison for Christmas. But the next day, when I was just sitting outside, I could hear turkeys. Bagging a turkey would be great. A turkey would be even better for my Christmas dinner. I got out my bow and I got a big old turkey. I gutted the turkey and I tossed that stuff into a bucket for the dogs too. When Christmas Day came, I cooked my turkey. But the minute I got done eating, there was a knock at the door. I peeked out the window and I saw two men standing out there. Other than my dad and my brother, nobody had ever come to my cabin. I grabbed my shotgun before answering the door. One of the men asked me if Jack was there. I told them, there's no Jack here. Then they asked me if I was alone. 
I said yes, but alarms were starting to go off in my head. Two more men came out from the side of my cabin. The man asked me again about Jack, asking, where is Jack? I told the men again, there's no Jack here. I think you guys should move along now. And I put my shotgun out front and center. The man just said, okay, all right, if you say so. And they left, but I had a really bad feeling about these guys. I watched the men walk over to a tree. I saw them getting their rifles that were hidden behind the trees, and I wondered why they felt the need to hide their weapons. The men walked into the woods, and I made sure to lock my door. I carved up the turkey and put aside some leftovers for myself. Then I piled some turkey onto plates and then went out the back door and called for Mama to come eat. I went back inside, but through the window I saw Mama, then Pup, and then the two males coming in last. I often thought that there did seem to be a pecking order. I was watching the dogs eat, and they were just about finished, when I started to hear gunshots, and then a round smashed one of my windows. I immediately started ducking for cover and asking out loud what the hell is going on. I was in my bedroom looking at the shattered window when I heard banging at my front door. It sounded like someone was trying to break the damn door down. I knew it had to be the men that were there earlier. One of them started yelling for Jack to come out. We're going through this again? What is it with these guys? I don't know who this Jack was, but these guys really seem to have a beef with him. I heard one guy yelling, Come on out, Jack, or we're coming in. Right then and there, another window got smashed. I left my shotgun near the front door, so instead of trying to run for that one, I went under my bed to get the shotgun that my dad and my brother gave me. As I was trying to load it, I heard my front door get kicked in. My hands were shaking, and before I could get the shotgun loaded, I had a gun pointed at my head. The man in front of me asked, where's Jack? I said, I told you before, I don't know any Jack. I sat on the floor with the gun pointed at me while a total of seven men were searching my cabin. One of the men said, where'd he go? We saw him come in here and we're not leaving without him. He owes us money. I told them again, I don't know any Jack, and nobody's been in here but me. I was getting angrier by the minute, and I told them, you just searched literally every inch of my cabin. Nobody's here but me. What's wrong with you guys? One of the men then hit me with the butt end of his gun. The man threatened me, telling me to shut up, and that he's only going to ask me one more time, and I better tell them where Jack is. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw movement outside, and I was pretty sure that it was Mama. I wanted to warn her away, but I was afraid of drawing their attention to her, knowing that if they saw her, they would shoot. But then Mama came to the door. She started out on all fours, but then she stood up. She growled and let out a fierce howl. In the blink of an eye, Pup and the two males were right behind her. I heard one of the men yell out, and I saw the men aiming at the dogs. But before any of them could pull a trigger, the dogs were on them. All I could hear was screaming and a couple of shots were fired. But these men were on the losing end. Two men made a run at the back door, but one of the dogs pulled both of them back. This may sound really strange to you. Honestly, it seems strange to me now. But during this attack, I think that was the very first time that I realized that they didn't have paws at all. I saw that Pup's paws were big and misshapen, and Mama's too. I guess I just thought it was a deformity. Maybe because I never saw them use their hands in this way. I watched, shocked by how their hands were just like any man's hands, and I wondered why I hadn't picked up on that before. Well, I was now terrified. Terrified of the men, and now the dogs, too. I'd never seen them do anything like this before. Well, I did with the bear, but this was different. I crawled to the couch and I didn't move. I tried to block everything out that was happening, but before I knew it, the cabin was completely trashed and there was blood everywhere. I think I was in shock. I think it was shock and fear that caused my body and mind to just shut down. I fell asleep somehow and I woke up to it becoming dark outside. When I first woke up for a few seconds, I thought everything must have been a dream. But all it took was one good look around my cabin to see all of the blood, glass, and broken stuff all over. 
My head hurt really bad, but I got up and followed a trail of blood out the door, heading into the woods. I stopped. I told myself that I need to go clean up the cabin. I guess the truth is that I was afraid to go into the woods. It took me half the night to clean up the worst of the mess. Thankfully, the living room was the only room that was really bad as far as the blood. I cleaned blood off of the floor and the walls, then threw out things that were too broken or too badly stained to try to clean. I threw out a table, broken lamps, my couch, and some smaller items. I put some boards up on the broken windows, and I knew that soon I'd have to make a trip into town. Fixing things was going to take a few trips there. I slept for a couple of hours, then I got up and I left at 6 a.m. for the long trip into town. After that long day of traveling to and from town, I fixed my door, but after that I went to bed. I was exhausted. But before falling asleep that night, and for many days that followed, I wondered if Mama, Pup, and the other two dogs were okay. I also wondered what happened to the men. I wondered who survived. I didn't see or hear Mama, Pup, or the others for about three months. I wondered if they were alive. If they were, would they ever be back one day? As the events of the night got pieced back together in my memory, I realized that if not for those dogs, I would probably never have been seen again. Well, one day I got surprised by my nephews, Jacob, who was 16, and Joey, who was 15. My dad and my brother brought them up to the cabin. They all had big bags of food, and the boys had duffel bags. They asked if they could stay for about a week. Of course, I told them. In my mind, I was thinking that it's been really quiet for months, and I shouldn't allow that one bad day to disrupt everything. Well, my dad and my brother left the boys with me, and they said they'd come back next week. The boys were only there one night, and the very next day they came running into the cabin, and they were yelling about seeing a werewolf outside. They started laughing, and I asked the boys, what are you talking about? I asked them if they were messing around with me. But they were acting serious and they kept saying, Uncle Danny, get your gun, please. I told them I'd go look. And there she was, it was Mama Dog. I went back and yelled to the boys, Boys, this is Mama Dog. Joey yelled back to me, Nuh-uh, that's a fucking werewolf. Language, I reminded him, but I couldn't help but laugh. I told the boys that Mama wouldn't bother them, that they were safe. But they were still afraid, and they told me they wanted to go home. There was no way they were going to stay the week. I said, just stay the night, and if they felt that way tomorrow, I'd get them down to town and have their dad pick them up. And then I said, watch, you'll see. Mama won't hurt me. She's a good dog. And then I went, and I got some meat from the fridge and put it on a couple plates. I told them to watch from the window if they didn't want to come out. I set the plates down, and just like always, Mama ate, then Pup came. And then the other two came in last. I said something about Pup, and Jacob asked, why did I call him Pup? Jacob said, it's way too big to be a puppy. Why are you calling him that? I said, yeah, I know. I know he's grown, but I've called him that ever since he was a puppy, and I just still call him that. I said, see, they just wanted some of my food. But when Joey saw that there were four of them, the poor kid actually fainted. He wasn't out for very long at all, just a couple of minutes. When his eyes opened, he asked what happened. I told him that he fainted, but he was okay. Mama and the others finished eating, and then they walked off. Even after showing the boys that the dogs knew me and they weren't going to hurt us, they were still afraid. I hadn't seen the boys that afraid since they were little kids. They were so afraid that they even wanted to sleep in my room. And then when they got up in the morning, they still wanted to leave. So I left with the boys that morning, and their dad picked them up from town. I headed back to the cabin after that, and I got there right as it was starting to get dark. The following morning, there was a knock at my door. It was my brother, and as soon as I opened the door, my brother asked, What the hell is living up here? What the hell are you feeding, and what's going on? The boys said you were feeding four werewolves. I knew the dogs were different, but I didn't think of them as werewolves. I just said, No, it's just four dogs. He said, the boys are shook up bad, and they're worried about you. And then he said, I'm staying the night. I'll head back in the morning, but I want to see what's going on here. Well, that night, when my brother heard some howling, he said, what's that? I said, it's the dogs. They probably just want some food. 
I cut up some venison and put it on plates like I always did. Then I took the plates outside. And as soon as I went inside, they came out to eat. My brother was looking out the window, and then he got so serious. He said, Danny, those aren't any damn dogs. I don't know what they are, but they aren't normal dogs. He kept talking, saying, I don't know if they're werewolves or some kind of abnormal species, but they sure as hell aren't dogs. Listen to me, Danny. Those are not dogs. I don't know what you think they are, but they're not dogs. Ben said that he was leaving early in the morning, and if I insisted on staying, then I'm crazy. He left the cabin the next morning, and he didn't come back. Well, seven years later, there was a bad snowstorm, and a tree came down on my cabin. I couldn't stay there due to the blizzard conditions. I had no choice but to leave and then come back with help to get the tree off my cabin. That tree did a lot of damage. It took me almost a year to get it back to where I could live there again. And when I was back living there again, I was waiting to see the dogs or hear their howls, but I didn't. I never saw Mama, Pup, or the other two ever again, and that really bothered me. Four years after that, I started hearing growling. At first, I thought that maybe the dogs were back, and I was pretty excited to see them again. But they never did come back around, and they would have come around for sure. They would have come around looking for food if they were nearby. Then, many nights, I'd hear sounds, sounds that I'd never heard in all the time I'd been living there. I knew it wasn't the dogs making these sounds. They were beating sounds that sounded a little like drumming. I began to hear screaming sounds and this hooting sound. The hooting reminded me a little bit of an owl, but I've heard many owls, and unless there's such a thing as a giant owl, it couldn't have been that. You could tell by the depth and the range, the way that the sound traveled, that it's something way bigger than any owl. I stopped and listened any time I heard the new sounds. I thought it was really interesting how the screams, hollers, hoots, and any other sounds seemed to be all over the place. They would be high-pitched, then low, long sounds and short, always so different from one sound to the next. It would remind me a lot of a yodel at times, and then the next minute it might sound like a hoot, or a scream, or this warbled sound. I couldn't even say for sure if it was a man or an animal. All of these new noises went on for about a year, but I didn't have any guess for what was making all the racket out there. It made me nervous. It scared me in a way that the dogs never did, and I sure would have felt better if the dogs were around, but they weren't. I'd listen to the different sounds and try to figure it out. I believed that whatever it was, there had to be more than one. There were way too many different sounds, and in many different locations. I'd hear it just about every night and sometimes in the daytime too. Well, one day I finally saw what was causing all that noise on my property. It was a man, or it looked just like a man. It was just covered in a very thick coat of hair. That man was a hell of a lot bigger than me. I'd say he had to be at least nine feet, probably taller, and at least 350 pounds. He was really dark brown and he had really, really dark brown eyes. I saw him clearly because it was late in the afternoon. It hadn't begun to get dark yet. I saw him, and he saw me, and that was that. That was two years ago, and I still hear them. If they don't bother me, I won't bother them, and so far there hasn't been any problems. If I have anything special to report, you might hear from me in the future. I don't want to leave my peaceful home. So I hope that we all can continue to just get along. I think they probably like it here for the same reason that I do. It's so beautiful and peaceful and quiet. I still think about Mama Dog, Pup, and the other two. I hope they're okay wherever they're at. Okay guys, that's it for tonight. I'll be back in a few days with more scary and strange experiences.